good morning children nice to see you all again after this short break hope you all had a good break i can hear some of you saying in your mind ma'am what break it is we had the same schedule not able to go out sitting at home all the time and in front of the gadgets maybe but watching something else so i know it's one of the toughest time all of us are going through children yeah even today morning when i got up i was just got up with this uh thinking in my mind oh how long this is going to go again i have to do the same videos for classes and i have to cannot go out once i started thinking like that i started feeling sad and depressed that was putting me off so much but you know what suddenly for after a few seconds i said to myself i'm not going to allow these things to affect me instead i started thinking about things that i am thankful to god for yeah even in this situation though there are so many things we can be negative about we can be upset about still there are things we can be grateful to god thankful to god about as i started i even started writing those things by the time i finished writing you know what i was completely my attitude was completely changed i said i'm not going to keep cribbing about what i don't have but i'm going to be grateful to god for what i have my whole day went on well so i would like to give you a small advice i know you all are also going through a lot of frustrations lot of upset and i heard that and we heard, we hear that this is something that has never happened in the whole century or till many years back this is something very unique and something unexpected that's happening right so so it is all nothing is in our hands right so first thing i want you to do is start thinking about some of the things that you were thankful to god for okay for example i started writing like this lord i am thankful to you for the good health you have given me okay you might be seeing in news and other things how much people are suffering and how much um the pain and the suffering they go through because of corona the social stigma all that is happening but god has kept us all in good health and strength we need to be thankful for that we need to be thankful to god for the food we eat you know there are so many people who lost their job and you have, would have heard about these migrant laborers and they had to go back to their place no food starving all the time but god has given us good food to eat you know sometimes even i think think like this that we are living in a special time it's not a good time it's of course a bad time but definitely maybe in few after a few years this time will be in the history books because this is something so unique which has never happened so i think i used to think that okay i'm living in a phase or i'm living in a period which could be written in history books in the coming years right so like this you can take time thank you for the thank god for the gadgets you have for all the facilities you have we here in villages and rural areas children are really suffering they are not able to have any gadget or internet facility and they are not able to study anything but thank god god has given us all these provisions okay children so i want you to take an conscious effort to sit and think of the things that you are grateful to god for thankful to god for okay every day every time when your mind is getting upset about things and and you tend to get depressed or disappointed try to tell yourself and try to consciously take an effort to think about the things that god has done for you that you want to be thankful to god for start writing it will really help you children okay so this is one thing i wanted to tell you and the other thing is about studies i know online studies is not easy yeah you have to study by yourself 
and the thing is in march when the lockdown started we all thought maybe it will be fine in april in april we thought might be it will be fine in may in may thought at least may we thought july 1st when we start we will be going to school but nothing happened is still in the same position okay and even now we don't know how long this will go on okay nobody is able to predict anything it can go on for many more months also so the point is this is the way of going to be the way of only way of studying for the next few months so instead of cribbing or getting upset about i don't like online education it's too hard instead of telling like this might as well we we'll think in our mind i don't have any other option we have to study like this okay we are trying our best to make it make it as understanding as possible to clear all your doubts and even in this term sir is plan planning to introduce some um, competitions and things like that to keep it more interesting children but you have to make up your mind okay i heard in those two and a half months we had so far there had been a lot of pending work you didn't finish your work on that day and it went on and on don't allow that to happen okay and from now on you make it a point that i will be very regular in my work i will not think that okay school will reopen i'll go back and study we don't know when that will happen okay so whatever work is given to you every day try to be regular try to tell to yourself i will be regular i will do my best to do my studies especially being in ninth standard you will have to work very hard i hope you understand the situation yes children so as we start this i would like to encourage you to have a very positive note okay don't sit in front of this gadget thinking that again like this how long and all that okay okay it's not going to be too long but as long as it is there i am going to do my best that should be your attitude okay i think these two things are going to help you change your attitude and do better in your studies ahead yeah children now let's go towards our studies okay so we'll be starting with chapter 2 okay chapter 2 motion in one dimension motion in one dimension so today i'm not going to exactly start the chapter but we are just going to revise all that we are just going to revise all that we have studied in your lower classes okay so motion in one dimension so a few of the things that we will be studying are first concept of rest and motion concept of rest and motion so when is a body said to be at rest these are things you have been studying from smaller classes so a body is said to be at rest when its position does not change with respect to its surroundings for example right now i'm standing in front of me this camera and its stand are there the right side there's a window and the left side there is a chair and behind there is a board now after 2 seconds you see these are my surroundings after 5 seconds these are my surroundings that means i am at rest okay my position with respect to my surroundings has not changed okay that is rest now how do we define motion whenever my position is changing with respect to my surroundings then i am said to be in motion okay for example when i am if i am suppose going to walk okay right now this camera is my surrounding maybe i walk a few yards and i have a chair next to me that's my surrounding like that it can keep changing so if the position of if my position is going to change with respect to my surroundings then i am said to be at motion okay so this is the basic definition of rest and motion now tell me one thing suppose you are travelling in a car okay you are all sitting in a car i'm sure you don't run inside a car okay so when you are travelling in a car you are just sitting are you at rest or motion yes you are at motion because you are not directly moving you are in the car and the car is moving so you are also moving along with that okay and every time your surroundings are changing so 
again you are said to be in motion okay so this is the basic thing about rest and motion okay so now the next um, concept is distance and displacement distance and displacement okay so these two terms they look to be same even they sound to be nearly the same but they are different let's try to understand how okay now let us take an example okay a common example i'm taking for both a person started from position a he travel eastwards okay so north south west and east so this is towards east he travel 4 meter okay and reached b and then from b he started walking north okay he changed the direction started walking in north direction for 3 meter okay from a to b in east direction 4 meter from b to c the north direction 3 meter now what is the total distance traveled by him or total length covered by him yeah it's very easy 4 plus 7 4 plus 3 7 meter that is distance okay total length travel by a body total length travel by a body okay so in this case distance is equal to ab plus bc which is equal to 4 plus 3 that is 7 meter okay yes now come to displacement when the definition of displacement says it is the distance traveled in a specific direction distance traveled by a body distance travel by a body in a specific direction yeah so now according to this definition what if i see the actual path the person has taken is he has first traveled in eastward and then he had traveled northward his direction has changed when i calculate distance i need not worry about the direction but when it comes to displacement the definition says distance travel in a specific direction or a particular direction okay so i can't have this change in direction so i have to just take initial position final position and then i have to join so this length ac is called displacement length ac is called displacement because only if i travel if i have to start starting point is a ending point is c if i have to travel in only one direction then i have to choose this path and that is called displacement yeah so displacement is given by displacement is ac okay and you know um this is a right angle triangle okay this is a mathematic principle pythagoras theorem we can apply something called pythagoras theorem for right angle triangle so these are the two sides this is the side opposite to 90 degree so the pythagoras theorem says ac square is equal to ab square plus bc square okay so ac square will be 4 square plus 3 square so 4 square is 16 plus 9 that is 25 okay therefore ac will be root 25 that is 5 meter so my displacement will be 5 meter are you able to see the difference distance was 7 meter but displacement is only 5 meter why when i said the distance actually he is traveling from a to b then b to c when i say distance i have to consider every path 
But when I say displacement, I just have to see the starting point and ending point, join it straight and get the, and find this length, that will be the displacement, okay? So, this is the definition. So, first point will be the definition and then how to calculate distance and displacement, okay? Now, we'll do some more examples, then you will be able to understand it. Okay, let's consider a body traveling in a path like this. Okay, it started like this, went like this for 2 meter, then it came down, this is 4 meter, went up, again 4 meter, came down 4 meter and again went up 2 meter. Okay, so if I ask you total distance total distance travel, what you should do? You just have to add everything, okay? 2 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 2, okay? 6 plus 4, 10, 14, 16. So, 16 meter. So, the distance travel is 16 meter. If I ask you to find the displacement, what you have to do? You just have to join the starting point and ending point. Let's take this as A and this as B. So you just have to join this and you have to calculate this length, this length, this length, this length and add on that. So length of AB will be the displacement. Length of AB will be the displacement. Okay. So this is example number two. You see another example. Suppose a body is moving in a circular path. Okay, body is moving in a circular path. Okay, it started here. Okay, it's a circular path and starting point is this and ending point is this, which is diametrically opposite point. Diametrically opposite means if I draw a diameter from here, the end of it. Okay, so A is the starting position, B is the ending position, O is the center. And it is a circle of radius 7 meter. It is a circle of radius 7 meter. Okay. So starting point is A, ending point is B. Now, let us calculate the distance. Now, distance will be, distance traveled is the entire length of this path. What is this called? Circumference of circle. Yeah. From here, the length of the whole thing is called the circumference of circle. You know the formula for finding circumference of a circle? Yes, it is 2 pi r. But here I am not doing a full circle. I am just doing only half circle. So, my distance travel will be 2 pi r upon 2. Okay, because it is just half the circle. So, 2, 2 will get cut. Pi into r. Pi is 22 by 7. My radius is 7, so 22 meter is the distance. Whereas, when I have to calculate displacement, as I told you, it is distance in particular direction. So, in this case, direction is continuously changing. So, if I have to take the displacement from A to B, I just have to take this diameter. So, displacement will be diameter AB. Okay, when I consider the circular part, displacement will be just this straight line from here to here that's nothing but a diameter now radius is 7 so diameter will be 2 into 7 14 meter so distance is 22 meter and displacement is 14 meter now in circular path there's another example so the same example circular path a body is starting here and comes back to the same point it started at A and coming back to A. Okay, finished one full circle. So, in this case, what will be the distance? 2 pi r. Yeah, full circle. So, you don't have to divide by 2, 2 pi r. Displacement will be 0. Why? Starting point and ending point both are 
same. So displacement will be 0. So in this case displacement is 0. Distance is 2 pi r. Okay. Hope you got some idea children. So like this they can give you any diagram and ask you to calculate the distance and displacement. Okay. So even take this example. A boy, a, a boy started traveling from A. A to B. Okay. It's traveling from A to B. Maybe the distance is 5 meter. He went from A to B. Okay. Then he turned. Okay. He just he turned his direction and started coming from B to A. Okay. He started here, went till here, came back to A. So what is the distance travel? A B to A B, right? A B and back also on A B. So 2 into A B. That is 2 into 5, that is 10 meter. Displacement again will be 0. Why? Starting point and ending point are the same. He is going and coming back to the start, the same point. So whenever starting point and ending point are same, displacement is going to be 0. Keep this always in mind. But distance can never be 0. Distance can never be 0. It will always be some number. Okay, another one difference between distance and displacement is displacement will always be less than distance. You see in all the examples that we saw, even in this case, I think distance was 22 meter and displacement was 14 meter. Displacement will always be less than the distance or it can even sometimes be zero, but distance can never be zero. Yeah, hope you understood this. Now, this leads us to the next concept of scalar and vector quantities. Scalar and vector quantities. So, scalar quantity, it's a new word for you, and vector quantities. Now, we know the various physical quantities. In physics, we talk about lots of physical quantities. Mass, length, time, area, volume, speed. These are all different quantities, even distance, displacement. These are called physical quantities. Now, all these physical quantities can be classified into two types. Either they will be scalar or they will be vector. Okay. Now, how do I differentiate? The definition is like this. Scalar quantities are those, they have only magnitude but no direction. Vector quantities are those which have magnitude and direction. Magnitude and direction. Now, out of distance and displacement, distance is a scalar quantity because when I talk about distance, I am not worried about the direction. I am only worried about the number. Okay. So, magnitude is basically the number, the numerical value. Okay. So, I am just worried about the number 4 plus 3, 7. I am not worried in which direction. Right. So, only magnitude are the numerical value and no direction. Direction I don't, I'm not bothered whether he can go in north, south, east, west, that's not a problem, right? Whereas vector quantity means it will have a magnitude and a specific direction. So displacement is a vector quantity. Why? So when I talk about displacement, it should be always in a specific direction. I have to Pay attention to the direction. I can't just take any direction. So that's why that comes under a vector quantity. Okay. So like this, there are so many examples. So as we do the other uh, physical quantities, I'll be able to differentiate it for you. Hope you understood today's class. These are basics important for studying this chapter, motion in one dimension. Thank you children.